okay we will uh, start this uh, today's session uh, in the last class we have moved up to this one right now uh, we're just talking about uh, memory shadowing and uh, right memory shadowing we are talking about and how to collect the memory for the embedded system so let us uh, there are two ways of representing a memory. First one is the size of the memory, and second one is the wall size of the memory. What is that size of the memory? Memory tends to be expressed in terms of number number of uh, memory bytes per chip. That is how many number of uh, bytes you can represent in a uh, in a memory chip. You, you generally call as the size of the memory chip that is memory chip comes in standard size of 1512 bytes or 1024 bytes 4 kilobytes 8 uh, 8 kilobytes 16 kilobytes and so on up to 1 megabytes etc that is memory chips we use usually comes uh, with a size of 5 from beginning from 512 bytes to up to 1024 kilobytes so that is that is 1 megabytes and etc while selecting a memory size, the address range supported by the processor must also be considered. That is, what is the range of the address that is that is specified by the uh, the memory chip has also to be considered. For example, a, uh, for a processor or a controller with 16-bit address bus, right, the maximum number of memory location that can be addressed is to the power of 16 because they're just making use of 16-bit address lines, right, address. So that's why number of uh, now addresses that is uh, used by 16 bit address bus it is 2 to the power of 16 which is nothing but 65536 bytes or in it is also for it is called as a uh, 64 kilobytes that is while selecting the the memory uh, memory chip we have to, uh, we, f we have to first consider the the size of the memory chip right uh, what is the size uh, represented by each memory chip and also the num the address range Supporting the the processor must also be considered. What is the address range or how many bits are used to represent each memory address? We call it as a address range. So, okay, if you are making use of 16-bit address bus, so then the maximum number of uh, memory location that can be addressed is two to the power of 16 bytes. So, it is it is equal to what? two to the power of 16, which is nothing but 65,536 bytes, which is nothing but 64 kilobytes the entire memory range supported by the processor or controller may not be available to the memory chip alone right so what is it can be it may be shared between the input output and other ic's and the memory right so the range uh, that is specified by the memory chip may not be available for the entire memory chip alone so okay so it may be shared between the input output as the other one uh, other access as well <coughs> so that is uh, that is the main uh, point with respect to the the size of the memory and the next one it is the world of the world size of the memory so the number of memory bits that can be read or written together at a time that is how many bits that is getting going to be read or write written together we we generally call it as uh, the the world size of the memory world size can be six uh, four bits or uh, eight bits or 12 bits or 16 bits and up to 32 bits and etc the voice of the memory chip must match, must match with the data bus width of the processor or the controller. So this, uh, whatever the word size you have it, it must match with the, or it must, it must be synced with the, the database, uh, the, must be synced with the database width of the processor or controller. So this is how you, you can specify or you can select the uh, memory based on these two criteria. The first one is a uh, size of the memory chip and second is the word size of the memory and the next one it's a flash flash memory right what kind of memory you're just using it the first one is the flash memory is a popular choice for rom in embedded applications you are just using flash memory uh, which is the most popular uh, choice for the rom in embedded applications it is powerful and cost effective solid state uh, storage technology for mobile electronics devices and other consumer electro applications so that is it is most one of the most popular as well as the powerful as well as the cost effective solid state uh, 
uh, storage technology for mobile applications. Flash memory comes in two major variants. That is a NAND flash as well as the NOR flash, right? So flash, we already know that you can write the things or you can burn the things on the, the flash devices or the flash memories, right? There are two kinds of uh, uh, mem uh, flash memory you have it, NAND uh, uh, flash and the second one is the NOR flash. NAND flash is a high density, low cost, non volatile storage memory. It's a high density, that is the number of uh, codes or the number of instructions that I can put it in a uh, square area or in a given uh, area, it's very high and it is low cost in nature and also it is non volatile storage memory. Once you have written it, it cannot go away even if, you, if the power goes off. While NOR flash is less dense and the slightly expensive, that is NOR flash is less dense, that is you can put lesser number of instruction in a square uh, square area or a square uh, centimeter or whatever it may be, right? So in a given area, you can put less number of instruction and it is slight, slightly expensive as compared with the NAND flash. NOR flash supports the execute in place, that is XY, XIP uh, technique for program execution. The X, uh, X, uh, XIP technology allows the execution of code memory uh, from RAM itself without the need for copying it to RAM as in the case of conventional execution method. What you are doing in the conventional execution method is that you are bringing the code from the uh, storage memory or uh, the secondary storage into primary memory then you start executing it. That is when you bring the code from um, prime, secondary memory into storage or into uh, into primary memory, we start calling it as the process or the, we say that the program is under execution. So in case of the NAR flash, what you are doing is that you execute in place. That is instead of bring it to, bringing it to, uh, from the st secondary storage to the primary memory. So what you are doing is that you are executing the code right execution of the code will be done in the rom itself that is a read only memory itself so without need for copying the it to the ram that is without need um, needing to copy into the rom instead what you are doing is that you are executing the code in the ram itself so that you are avoiding uh, bringing that code from uh, rom into ram it is a good practice to use a combination of NOR and NAR memory for storage requirements where NAND can be used for storing the program code or uh, data and like the data I captured in a uh, camera device right you're just using like it is be best approach to uh, use both the combination of NOR and the NAR gate or the memory storage memory for storage uh, memory requirements where NAND can be used for st <coughs> storing uh, the program code or uh, data like uh, the data captured in the in a camera device and uh, NAND flash doesn't support XIP and if the NAND flash is used for storing program code a uh, DRAM can be used for copying and executing the, the program code right instead right or the NAND flash doesn't support XIP there is executed place that's why what you're doing is that you are using DRAM to copy uh, it can be used for copying copying uh, uh, and executing the, the program code. And NOR flash supports XIP and it can be used as a memory for bootloader or for even storing the, the complete program itself, right? So in case of NAND, what you're doing is that it doesn't support execute uh, in place. That's why what you're doing is that you are, you are to store the program code, you are using DRAM. That is a dynamic random access memory, but whereas NOR, Flash supports XIP, that's why both program code as well as your uh, uh, all your data will be stored in the uh, ROM. So you are going to execute the program in the ROM itself. So it and it is basically used for uh, memory for bootloader or even for storing or the complete program, right? So that is one advantage of the uh, NOR flash. That is you are just using, it is used as a memory for bootloaded instructions right bootloaded in the sense in the sense whenever you boot the system there are some instructions that has to be started uh, loading the instructions right so to have that one you need uh, uh, like uh, those instructions will be stored in the nor flash so this is what uh, you are just uh, using with the 
uh, what you call it as the embedded system flash memory is a popular choice for the ROM in the embedded applications and the EEPROM data storage memory is all uh, as either serial interface or the parallel interface as well right you are also using EEPROM uh, data storage memory is available as either serial interface or parallel interface chip that is that is also being used with the uh, embedded system and if the processor or controller of the device supports serial interface and the amount of uh, data to write and read to and from the device is less it is better to have a serial e prompt chip itself right you can use uh, both uh, e prompt with the uh, serial interface as well as the parallel interface uh, chip as well if the uh, processor or the if the embedded system uh, is is writing or reading uh, uh, less amount of data from the device then it is to, uh, it is better to have the serial interface serial e prompt chip itself the serial e prompt saves the address space of the total system right oh. what you are doing is that it saves the address space of the total system because the number of uh, uh, read and writes are very less in case of the the serial interface the memory case capacity of the serial eprom is usually expressed in bits or kilobits right it is it's it's not bytes it is bits that is kilobits and as well as the it is expressed in terms of bits as well as the the kilobits that is 512 bits 1 kilobits and 2 kilobits 4 kilobits etc are examples of for serial eprom memory representations it is basically an example that is 512 bits and uh, 1 kilobits are the example of the serial eprom memory representation that is eprom serial eprom uh, uh, interface is basically used when uh, the amount of data to read and write is very less from the device then you, you are using serial interface chips and for embedded system with low power requirements like portable devices choose low power memory devices because uh, those um, portable memory uh, memory uh, devices requires larger uh, like, uh, like uh, lesser power consumption that's why such for such uh, embedded system you should select the memory devices which requires lower powers right which requires lower power consumptions right and the next one the certain embedded devices may be targeted for operating at extreme environmental conditions like high temperature high humid area etc select an industrial grade memory chip in case of commercial grade uh, chip for such devices there are some embedded system which are being uh, which are being operated at extreme environmental conditions like high humidity high uh, temperature high uh, what you call it as uh, high high rainy season right like areas right in such conditions instead of using uh, commercial grade chips you're supposed to use uh, industry grade memory chips so that they can sustain these extreme environments environmental conditions so this is how you are uh, using it right for small uh, for the flash memory can be used when when the application needs so uh, like you are using flash now particularly NAND flash if you are executing the instructions bringing from main memory into uh, sorry from secondary storage to memory you are using NAND flashes but if the requirement states that you you can execute the instruction in the ROM itself then better to use NOR flash right and for uh, EEPROM can be used when you are using when when you when you are using a smaller amount of data that has to be read or written into the uh, memory devices in such a conditions we are using eprom uh, serial interface chips okay if you want to write larger data uh, or if you want to read larger data from the um, memory devices then you better to use eprom parallel interface devices and uh, next one that is what you study for uh, power requirements that is low power requirements like the portable devices better to use uh, you know, memory devices uh, which requires lesser power uh, which has large uh, lesser power consumptions right and uh, the next one it is uh, for embedded systems which are working in an extreme condition or environmental conditions 
better to use a high temperature, high humid area, etc. Right. So uh, for that, uh, such a uh, environmental sorry for such embedded system, better to use an industrial grade memory chip instead of the commercial grade memory chips. Right. So that is what the uh, things. And the next one uh, is the sensors and the actuators. What do you mean by sensors and the actuators? An embedded system is in constant interaction with the real world and the controlling and monitoring functions exhibited by the embedded system is, is achieved in accordance with the changes happening to the, the real world, right? Your embedded system is in con constantly in touch with the, 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 the external world or the real world and whatever the changes that has that is going to happen in the real world the same thing will have to be executed <coughs> and you can see those changes in your application as well and the changes in system environment are variables are detected by the sensors connected to the input port of the embedded system the embedded system is going to uh, monitor the the changes in the uh, real world by connecting sensors right these uh, sensors are going to get the environmental variables and uh, feed it into the environ uh, embedded system if the embedded system is uh, designed for any controlling purpose the system will produce some changes in the controlling variable to bring the control variable to the desired value it is achieved through an uh, achieved through an actuator connected to the output port of the embedded system so what you are doing is that your your embedded system is connected to the sensor which is basically used to get the uh, variable variables from the the real world or the uh, or the external world and if there are any changes in the external world then you are going to control that control that by running some functions and this is achieved through the actuators and what the actuators will do is that they are making some they are producing some changes uh, in in the controlling variables and these controlling variables will bring the uh, the control variable to an desired level let us take for example i am just monitoring or uh, i have an embedded device uh, which is basically used to monitor the uh, room temperature right so i i just wanted to set the room temperature as 20 or let us take i want to set the room temperature at 25 if the external uh, so and uh, this embedded system is connect uh, is connected to the what you external world using a sensor device now the sensor device will continuously monitor the activity uh, sorry uh, changes in the uh, temperature of the external world let us take if the if the external world is having a temperature of 20, 30 degrees then the sensor will capture that variable and it will give it to the embedded device what the embedded device will do is that it is going to uh, change the variable, variable in such a way that your room temperature will be ma maintained at 20 degrees, sorry, 25 degrees. Even though the external uh, temperature is of 35 degrees Celsius, so it doesn't matter. So your embedded system is going to activate the actuators so that it can maintain the uh, the room temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. If let us take if the room temperature, uh, so I have connected the embedded device with a sensor. And the, now the external uh, temperature or the real world temp real uh, world temperature is 20 degrees, right? Re real world temperature is 20, 30 degrees. That is, it is very cool, a cold one. In that case, uh, the sensor will capture that data and it will give it to the embedded device. And what the actuator will do is that it will actually set the room temperature to 20 deg 25 degrees Celsius, stating that it is too cold outside so now you have it is it uh, the room temperature will be set to some warmer conditions so that is that is how your uh, actuator uh, is going to do uh, let us look at what the uh, sensor is a sensor is a trans transducer device that converts energy from one form to another form another for any measurement or control purpose right you are just going to convert an energy from one form to another form right for any measurement and control purpose and example is temperature sensor magnetic hall effect sensor humidity sensor and there are some sensors like uh, these are the, the some of the sensors which are basically used to uh, convert an energy from one form to another form 
And let us look at what do you mean by an actuator. Actuator is a form of transducer device or a mechanical and electrical device which converts signals to corresponding physical actions, right? It is going to convert the signals into um, what you call it as the physical actions, right? You have the you have collected the data and these collected data has to be converted into and physical action means that you, you actually have to set the, the appropriate variables that is called as a physical action. So actuator acts, acts, like, acts as an output device. It basically acts as an output device. Something like uh, the example of the actuator is a stepper motor. So that is both of them that is the sensors and the actuators are nothing but the transducer devices, right? So sensor which converts uh, energy from one form to another form, whereas the, uh, the actuator is, is going to convert the signals into physical actions, right? And the next one is the input output subsystem. The input output system of the embedded system facilitate the, uh, facilitates the uh, interaction of the embedded system with the external world. It is basically used to uh, interact or uh, communicate with the external world. The interaction happens through the sensors and the actuators and connected to the input and output ports respectively of the embedded system. This interaction is being, uh, it will be done by the sensors and sensors which will accept the input, right? Which will, uh, uh, which will monitor the external world and they will collect the data which in the form of the input data and based on these variables, uh, some action will be initiated and uh, the physical action will be initiated and uh, these physical action will go in uh, as an output activities right uh, through a through the through the actuators the sensors may not be directly interfaced with to the input ports right they may not be connect interfaced directly to the input ports instead they may be interfaced to signal conditioning and translating systems like adc and optocouplers etc they are they are not directly connected to the input port but instead they are con interfaced uh, through a signal conditioning and translating system like uh, ADC and optocouplers, right? They are not directly connected, sensors are not directly connected to the uh, input ports, but instead they are connected to the uh, system by using the uh, signal conditioning translating uh, systems like the ADC and the optocouplers. So let us uh, look at one more thing that is uh, light emitting diodes. That is also called as the LEDs. That is light emitting diode is an important output device for visual indication of any embedded system. You might have seen it on the calculator, right? Or you might have seen it on the any of the LEDs, right? What the LEDs will display is that they will display uh, the values on the terminal, right? So or on the, the screen. And this LEDs are important output device for visual indication. That's basically used to uh, see uh, the visual indication. They they are going to display the visual law. Uh, uh, kind of thing on the terminal for the embedded system. LED can be used as an indicator for the status of various signals and the situations. That is basically used in some some situation like stating uh, indicator for the status of various signals or the situations like the device is on, battery is low, or charging of the battery conditions and etc. Right? For this one, you are using the LEDs. Light emitting diode is an PN junction diode and it contains an anode and an cathode. It also contains, it contains basically an anode and cathode. For proper functioning of the LED, the anode is connected to the positive terminal of the supply voltage and the cathode to the negative terminal of the voltage. Right? Now we have the anode as well as cathode. Right? And this is the, the anode is connected to the positive side of the terminal of the supply voltage and cathode to the negative terminal of the voltage supply, right? The current flowing through the LED must be a value to the maximum current that it can conduct. Right? So the, whatever the current that is going uh, passing through the LED must be set uh, well below the uh, well below the value, uh, the maximum current that can be, that, uh, that it can conduct it or that it can allow it to pass. A uh, resistor is used a uh, series of limits for current through the LED, right? You are using the resistor to uh, control the uh, control the current that it, that can pass it through the LED. 
the ideally uh, the ideal uh, the ideal uh, led interfacing circuit is shown here right we have the leds here ground grounded and the vcc and to to series the limit of the current what you are doing is that you are just using the resistors right r r is nothing but the resistor which will control the uh, the flow of the current into the into the uh, what you call it as the diodes right so this is uh, this is what you, we call it as the light emitting diodes right leds can be interfaced to the port uh, pin of a processor or control controller in two ways the first one in the first method the anode is directly connected to the port pin and the port pin uh, drives the led right the anode pin is directly connected to the port pin and that uh, port pin drives the or uh, it is going to act on the led the port pin sources current to the led when the port pin is at logic high all right so it is going to um, it is going to give the input to the led when the port pin is at logical one right in the second method get the cathode of the led is connected to the port pin of the processor or controller and the anode to the supply uh, a voltage through a current limiting resistor right or oh, what you in the second method you are just connecting the the, the cathode to the the input output port and anode to the uh, supply voltage through a current limiting re resistor you are just in the first method you are connecting anode to the input output port and whereas in the second case we are connecting cathode to the input output port of the processor or the controller and anode is con uh, anode uh, to the supply voltage through a current limiting resistor the led is turned on when the pin port is logic low it is right led is turned on because it is negative right it is actually negative that's why uh, when the port is uh, pin is at logic low it will be uh, uh, led is turned on uh, here the port pin sinks current right it actually sinks the current right so that is how the the led works right in the first case you are connecting an anode to the input output port in the second method you are connecting cathode to the input output ports the next one is a, LS, a seven segment display led display right we have eight here that is a b c d e f g based on the uh, the levels that has been on so we are just looking at what what actual value it is the seven segment led display is an output device for displaying alphanumeric characters it's basically used to display an alphanumeric characters on the terminal it contains seven leds right led segments right so one two three four five six seven seven led segments we have arranged in a special form used for displaying alphanumeric characters so okay they are arranged in the in a special form so uh, that is basically used to display alphanumeric characters and one led used for representing decimal point in decimal number display right one led is used for used for uh, uh, representing a decimal point in uh, a decimal display right one one led is used for displaying one decimal point the led segments are named a to z and the decimal point led segment is named as a gp right one led point uh, led point uh, g uh, gp is uh, named as a decimal point right the led segments a to g a to g and dp should lit, uh, lit accordingly uh, to display numbers and the, the characters right so led segments has to lit uh, depending upon the, the output what you are going to do if you want to print d sorry three that is this uh, led a uh, sorry diode a has to be uh, displayed right and uh, led a has to be displayed b then g then c then d has to be on whereas f and e has to be off right and if you want to specify the decimal one so you have to uh yeah, the the value of dp must be high so this is how your uh led segment works right the led segment LED, uh seven segment uh, led displays are available in uh, two different configurations namely common anode and the, the common cathode in the common anode configuration the anodes of eight segments are connected commonly whereas in the common cathode configuration the cathodes of eight led segments are 
connected commonly right so in case of the anode so what you are doing is that you are connecting uh, you are connecting go uh, all the uh, connected uh, in a common anode configuration the anodes of the eight segments that is a positive value of all the anode segments has to be connected together right so this one they all connected to connected to one another right that's why they are called uh, it is connected to anode whereas now the common con in the common con cathode configuration the cathodes of eight led segments these are all connected to one another right segments are connected commonly it illustrates the common anode and cathode configuration this is for the anode configuration and this is for the cathode configurations right here or probably you are uh, connecting to the the positive value of the sorry how uh, uh, positive value of the inputs are with, uh, as uh, it is connected to the negative values right so this is how you are uh, common uh, anode uh, display, led display works under uh, the cathode um, common uh, cathode uh, led display works right so this is how your uh, seven segment display works based on the configuration of the seven segment led in the led segments uh, anode and or cathode is connected to the port of the the processor or controller in the order a segment to the least significant port pin and the this uh, dp segment to the most significant port in pin right so based on that so the the uh, the a a segment is to the least significant port pin so uh, a is the least significant port position whereas uh, uh, the dp segment is the most significant port pin right so it is connected right a is the most uh, least significant one and whereas the dp is called as the most significant one for which is connected to most significant Port pin. The current flow through each of the LED segments should be limited to a maximum value supported by the LED display. Well, we have seen it in the LED, right? So it can be achieved through uh, by limiting by including the resistors. We have seen it here, right? In here, uh, we are just uh, resisting or we are using resistor to uh, control the the flow of the uh, current through the LEDs. The same thing we are doing here as well. So a typical value of uh, is uh, 20 milli amperes is supported by for each LED display. The current can be limited by connecting a current limiting resistor to the anode or cathode of each segment. We are just connecting uh, or, uh, which is connected to a resistor uh, to the anode or cathode of each segment. Right? So, so in that way you can control or you can limit the flow of uh, current to each LED segments. The uh, seven segment LED display is used in low cost embedded applications like public car, telephone, uh, call monitoring devices, point of sale terminals, and etc. Right? So it is basically LED display are basically used in uh, in uh, public uh, or public telephone call monitoring devices and all the things. Right? That is what uh, the seven segment display is all about. And the next one is an optocoupler. Optocoupler is a solid state device to isolate two parts of a circuit. It's basically used to, it's a solid state device which is basically used to separate two parts of a uh, what you call it as circuit. And optocoupler combines an LED and a photo transistor in a single housing. It's basically contains what you call it as a LED. This is called as a LED and an opt photo transistor in a single housing it illustrates the functioning of a optocoupler device which is basically used to isolate or uh, separate two parts of a circuit so look at uh, input output interface i have it and second input output interface i have it to separate them this is one resistor on circuitry and this is the second circuit if you want to separate these two circuitry you are using an optocoupler and this optocoupler basically combines uh, an LED as well as a photo transistor, right? And in electronic circuits, an optocoupler is used for suppressing interference in data communication, circuit isolation, high voltage separation, simultaneous separation, and signal intensification as well, right? It is with this optocoupler is used for suppressing, suppressing in the sense uh, for 
suppressing interference in the data communication if the data communication is happening if there is any interference and to suppress that interference or disturbance you are using the optocouplers optocouplers can be used in either input circuits or in output circuits as well this can be used both in, in input circuits as well as the in output circuits the optocoupler is available as ICs from different semiconductor manufacturers. This is basically available as ICs from different semiconductor manufacturers, right? And MCT uh, 2M IC from Fairchild uh, Semiconductor is an example of optocoupler ICs, right? This is one example of the all right, uh, I, uh, optocoupler ICs, right? Optocoupler it can be connected for either to uh, input or it can be connected to output as well. And uh, it is, uh, there are different optocouplers are available as ICs from different semiconductor manufacturers. And figure illustrates the usage of optocoupler in an input circuit and output circuit of an embedded system with the microcontroller as a system core it is. Here is one, one optocoupler and the second optocoupler we are using it, right? And it is, this is connected to an input pin and this is also connected to a port pin. And what you are doing is that this, this optocoupler is basically used to uh, isolate the circuit from this side and this optocoupler is basically used to isolate the, uh, isolate the circuits, right? So we are having go to optocouplers here or uh, the optocoupler means uh, chips are IC and C2 uh, EM it is right. This is how your uh, it is usage of optocoupler in uh, input. Okay, we'll continue the things here. And the next one it is a uh, relay. Relay is an uh, is an electromechanical device. It's a it's a Electromechanic uh, application, the relay unit acts as a dynamic path selector for signals and the, the power. So it basically acts as a dynamic selector or sorry, a dynamic path selector for signals as well as the, the power. The relay unit contains a relay coil made up of insulated wire on a metal core and a metal armature with one one or more contact contacts on it. Right? It basically contains uh a uh, relay coil made up of an insulated wire okay it, you have an uh, relay coil which is made up of an uh, insulated wire which is on a, a metal core right and uh, metal uh, met, metal armature with uh, one or more contacts the relay works on the the principle of the electromagnetic right electromagnetic principle when a voltage is applied to the relay coil the current flows through the coil and which in turn generates a magnetic field when you pass the current through the the relay coil right then uh, the current flows through the coil and which in turn generates a magnetic field the magnetic field attracts the armature core and moves the the contact point so it basically uh, sorry it it actually it attracts the armature core and it actually moves the the contact point the movement of the contact point changes changes the power or the signal or uh, power or the signal flow plug path right so based on the the contact where the the movement of the contact point changes and your power or the signal flow path also changes here so this is uh, what we call what you call it as the, the relay which is basically used to uh, select the dynamic path of the of uh, dynamic path for the signals and the, the power which basically contains a relay, a relay coil made up of insulated wire on a metal core and a, a metal armature with one or more contacts on it. And relay works on electromagnetic principle. Okay, it, when a voltage is applied to the relay coil, current flows through the coil, which in turn generates a magnetic field, right? Which will convert or which generates a magnetic field on it. Then, when the magnetic field attracts the armature core and moves the contact point, 
so this contact point actually changes the the power or the signal flow plan and look at this the relay are available at different comp configurations here given now uh, the figure given below this is a widely used relay configuration for embedded applications right the relay coil what i have it and a single pole sing, uh, single uh, through normally opens here so, so this is this is open now so when when you when the current flows here so you're just going to close it so in that way you're, you're just it is going to uh, change the path of the signal or the the power so this is double one double through right here you have two points here so when 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 it is closed does it still open when if the if you want to change the signal path then this point will uh, this is going to be closed whereas this is going to be open so in this way we, you are just going to change the flow of the signal or the current so this is how you are I was just uh, going to use the make use of the relay in uh, selecting the dynamic uh, path for the signal as well as the power. And the single single pole uh, single through configuration has only one path for the information flow. It has only one path, right? Either it is closed or it is open, right? In this case, it is open, so nothing is going to flow here. Nothing is going to flow through this one. But whereas in this case. It is also single pole, all right? But uh, it is closed, so you can uh, the current or the signal passes through it. The path is either open or closed in normal conditions. For normally open single uh, pole single through relay, the circuit is normally open and it becomes closed when the relay is energized, right? When the relay is energized, it's going to uh, it's going to be closed. For normally closed. Uh, single pole single through relay the circuit is normally closed and it becomes uh, open when the relay is energized right when it get energized it's going to open it so in this case it's normally open so all the time it is open when it gets energized it's going to open but here in this case it is normally closed when when the when it is get energized it is going to open it right so that is called as normally open and normally closed and single pool double through configuration there are two paths for this information flow and they are selected by energizing or de-energizing de the relay so as i told you that there are two paths the path one this one and the path two you can have it so based on the the type of the like, which path is getting energized the particular path will be get closed right and if the if you want to deactivate the particular path you have to de-energize it so that it will be it is it get open and the other path will be get closed so the information information uh, will flow in another path that is how your uh, relay works right so single pool single through uh, which is normally open or with normally closed and the second method is a single pool double through right configuration there are two paths for information flow they are selected by energizing or de-energizing the, the relay and the relay is normally controlled by using a relay driver right you are just using a relay driver uh, to uh, driver connected in a circuit connected to the port pin of the processor or what you call it as a controller it's basically controlled by using a relay driver which is connected to the uh, the port pin of the processor or the controller and the transistor used for building the relay driver circuit as shown in the figure a transistor basically uh, used to uh, building a relay driver circuit as shown in the figure this is a transistor right which is going to uh, uh, use for building the relay driver circuit as shown in the figure a free wheeling diode is used uh, for free wheeling the voltage produced in the opposite direction when the relay coil is de-energized we are using the diodes so that is basically used to uh, produce the uh, voltage uh, it is basically used for uh, uh, free wheeling of the free wheeling the voltage that is produced in the opposite direction if the energy is produced in the opposite direction to handle that one we are using the 
uh, the free willing diodes the free willing diode is essential for protecting the, the relay and the, the transistor this diode is basically used for protecting the relay as well as the, the transistors because the voltage is flowing uh, uh, in a reverse direction or in the opposite direction to protect both relay coil as well as your transistor you are just using free wheeling diodes most of the industrial uh, relays are bulky and require high high voltage to operate there be uh, the the most of the industrial relays are bulky and require high voltage as well and special relays called the read relays are available for embedded application require switching of low voltage dc signals they are basically used for uh, requiring uh, uh, special relays or also called as a read or uh, relays are available for embedded applications require switching of low voltage d6 signals we are using special purpose as uh, a special relays called as a read which is going to, uh, uh, which are available for the embedded applications this is how your relay works right you are using what you call it as a relay driver to drive the relay so we are using the transistor as well as the the free wheeling diode so free wheeling diode is basically used to manage uh, the voltage which is flowing in a opposite direction and this is going to protect both uh, relay coil or the relay as well as the your transistors right and here is the switch uh, uh, right uh, what you call it as uh, uh, basically it is going to be open or uh, through or sorry closed based on the the, the the energization of the the circuit so this is how your uh, the relay works and the next one is a piezo buzzer right what is that piezo buzzer is a piezoelectric device for uh, is for generating audio indications in embedded applications piezo buzzer is a piezoelectric device it's an piezoelectric device for generating audio indications for embedded system uh, indications in embedded applications right it's basically used to generate an audio indications in the embedded applications piezoelectric buzzer contains a piezoelectric diaphragm which produces audible sound in response to the voltage applied to it right it is going to generate an audible uh, sound in response to the voltage applied to it whatever like if whatever the voltage you are going to apply it, for that voltage applied you are just it's, it's going to generate an audible sound and piezoelectric buzzers are available in two types that is called the self driving and the external drive self driving circuit contains all the necessary components to generate sound at the sound at a predefined tone right it it is going to generate a sound at a predefined sound right it will generate a tone on applying the voltage right and the, the tone what you have it is predefined and uh, whenever it wants to generate an audible sound right uh, it is going to generate with the predefined sound as well as the sound right so external driving piezo buzzer supports the generation of different tones or uh, the different tones in it right the tone can be varied by applying a variable plus strain pulse strain to the piezoelectric buzzer you are just going to generate different tones right by applying in a variable pulse train to the piezoelectric buzzer right by applying variable uh, uh, pulse trainer of train you're just going to get a different uh, tones right a piezo buzzer can be directly interfaced to the port pin of the processor or controller it can be directly controller uh, sorry con connected to the uh, or it can be directly interfaced to the port pin of the processor depending on the driving current uh, requirements the piezo buzzer can also be interfaced using a transistor based uh, driver circuit as in the case of relay it can be uh, also interfaced using a transistor based driver circuit okay so this is how what uh, the piezo burger is all about right with the buzzer it's basically generating audio indications in the embedded applications right and piezoelectric buzzer contains a piezoelectric diaphragm which produces audible sound in response to the voltage applied to it right whatever based on the the type of like voltage that you have applied it you are going to generate the audible sound the piezoelectric buzzers are available in two types the first one is a 
self driving and second one is the external driving self driving in the sense that it's going to generate the audible uh, sound right Pre it is based on the predefined tones right you are just uh, playing the predefined tones so that you are going to generate the audible sound in case of the external driving uh, you are generating uh, different tones by by applying variable pulse strain to the the piezo buzzer uh, or the piezoelectric buzzers uh, buzzers and the next one is a push button switch it is it's an input device push button switch is an input device push button switch uh, comes in two configuration namely uh, push to make and push to back it's basically comes with uh, two configuration namely called as the push to make as well as the push to back in the push to make configuration the switch is normally in the open state and if it makes a circuit contact when it is pushed or pressed push to make in the sense uh, the switch is normally in the open state it, it is open so nothing has been connected and uh, it makes a circuit contact when it is pushed or pressed when you press the things or when you uh, when you when you press it or when you push it so it is going to uh, make a circuit contact in the push push to back uh, the switch is normal in the closed state so and it breaks the circuit contact when it is pushed or pressed right it is just in case of the push to make the circuit is usually open in an open state and when a circuit contact is made so by using so circuit contact will be made uh, when uh, when you press it or when you push it so in case of the push to break configuration the switch is normally in the closed state and breaks the circuit when when it is pushed or pressed right you are just going to uh, end the inputs right that's all the push button stays in the closed state to stay closed or uh, open state as long it is kept in the push state and it breaks or makes the circuit connection when it is released it is something like pressing a input output button right what happens in the the push button stays in the closed state as long it is kept in the push state right when the it is in the open state that is you are just uh, inputting something into the things uh, that's why it is called as a uh, that's why it is in a push state and it breaks and makes the con circuit connection when it is released right it uh, right it is going to direct the connection when when the uh, the button is released right this is what uh, the put uh, push uh, button switch you all about it's an input device which comes with a uh, two configuration first one is a make a push to make as well as the push to break push to make in the sense that configuration the switch is normally in the open state and it makes a circuit contact when it is push or rest right it is basically in open state when the uh, when the so when you push it or when you press it the circuit uh, comes into contact so you can uh, it is considered as an input the push to breaking configuration the switch is normally in the closed state and it breaks the circuit uh, contact when it is pushed or pressed okay so this is uh, all about uh, the push button switch and the push button is used for generating a momentary pulse right it is basically uh, used to generate the uh, generating the momentary pulses right you are just uh, uh, if you want to uh, give one momentary pulses you, you are just making use of the switches the push button In embedded application push button is generally used for as reset and start switch and pulse generator you're just uh, using it as a reset or start switch are also called uh, used as a pulse generator and the push button is normally connected to the port pin of the host processor or the controller it's basically connected to the the, the processor or the the controller and depending on the way in which the push button interface uh, to the controller it can generate either a high pulse or a low pulse so that is how the the push button is interfaced to the controller so it can generate either a high pulse or the the low pulse figure like let us look at this one so how you are going to uh, use or how it is going to uh, uh, interface with the controller 
look at this one in case of the low pass generator you are just going to you have you have the input with the resistors and this port pin is connected to the the controller and it's going to generate a low pulse generators whereas uh, here we are generating the high pulse generators so, okay this is uh, how you are this is how your uh, push button this works uh, this is all about uh, this is all for the today's class in the next class we'll continue with the communication interface okay if you have any questions you can get here or uh, if you can also ask the questions on your whatsapp form. right do you have any questions no. yes no questions okay we'll uh, end it for today and uh, we'll meet it in the next pass okay Okay, we'll end the session for today and we'll meet in the next class.